So when I had the opportunity to sit backstage with Tucker Carlson, I noticed that there's been a sort of undercurrent on his tour. He's been talking more and more about spiritual warfare. And folks, yes, it is Halloween season, but at the same time, we do have to actually start to ask these questions. Are demonic forces real? Is the supernatural world, in fact, real? We got information just a few weeks ago that the Shroud of Turin is, in fact, real. The question before us is one that we can actually observe with our own eyes. Evil is real in the world. We can see it. The question is, is evil driven by an evil supernatural force? And if evil is in fact true, does then that mean to follow that good is also true? I had the opportunity to talk to Tucker about this. and You guys get to see it now for the first time. Tucker, we're here in Reading, we're on the tour, but there's been an interesting through line undercurrent theme that I've noticed on your tour as you've been going through these events. Are we in a spiritual war? Well, I mean, let me just say I am the least qualified person to speak on this or any other uh, spiritual topic in that my flaws are really obvious. They're certainly obvious to me. And I have no grounding at all in theology or religion or anything. So I, I really shouldn't even be talking about this. It's just that it's so obvious to me that the motives we ascribe to people are not the whole story and that people are being acted on by forces outside of nature, which we call above nature, super nature, supernatural. And um, I don't think any honest person can deny that. I don't think you need to be a Christian, which I am, by the way. But um, to see that, I think you just need to apply logic and empiricism and just like look around like, what is that? You know, why are they doing that? Why are they worshiping violence um, even when it doesn't help them killing for its own sake? What is that? And that's not a human. That's not a natural human impulse. Animals don't worship violence. They use violence as a means to achieve what they want, like eating, but they don't do it for its own sake. And our leaders do it for its own sake. They hurt people for the thrill of hurting people. Again, that's not a, a natural instinct. It's a supernatural instinct, and it's evil. And we see it all around us. So yes, of course, this is a spiritual war. Obviously, it's not a crackpot thing to say. It's the opposite. It's the obvious conclusion. And what's wild to me is that we're so dulled, we're so trained to ignore the obvious and to suppress our own instincts that it's like it sounds crazy to the modern western ear but yeah it's 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 clear it's actually kind of interesting that you can you can find your way in a sense to the good because of the obvious reality of evil it's smart i i strongly agree and that's that's been my path actually and and the i've had this since now everyone i know talks about the spiritual realm all the time and again I think we're from different parts of the country, different cultures. I did not grow up in that culture at all. Like I never met anyone who had like a crucifix in the house or went to like a religious school or believed in God, really. I mean, I never met anybody. There was nobody. And, you know, from Southern California, an affluent town in Southern California, no Catholic people. It was, you know, secular Protestants like me, secular Jews like my friends. Nobody talked about this stuff. So um, now like everyone I know, no matter how they grew up is not everyone, but a lot of people are talking about this stuff. And a lot of people are saying exactly what you just said. People in my orbit, I never believed that there could be a supernatural realm or God until I saw this evil, which I, I couldn't explain its origin or its purpose because it has no human purpose. Um, and that put me on this path to understanding that there's not simply evil, but also good, which is also all around us, which we don't notice, but it's real. This is Human Events with Jack Posobiec. The silent majority of this country, the workers, the truck drivers, the police officers, firefighters, the people who keep the country running. Stop screwing with them. And the more you keep screwing with them, the angrier and angrier they get until they start to get a little bit crazy. They, you talk about influencers. These are influencers, and uh, they're friends of mine. Jack, 
Selvig. Where's Jack? Jack. He's done a great job. All right, we're back. Jack Pasovic here, Human Events Daily. Folks, Americans are tired and frustrated. We've got a stalling economy. We've got inflation, the Biden inflation, the endless wars, which, by the way, Kamala Harris seems like she wants to continue, and the relentless assaults on our values. Thankfully, there are companies like today's episode sponsor, Patriot Mobile, that still believe in America and our Constitution. Human Events is proud to partner with Patriot Mobile because they are on the front lines fighting for this First and Second Amendments, the sanctity of life and our military and first responder heroes. Look, you can take a stand for conservative causes. Put America first. Switch to Patriot Mobile today. Support the red economy. You get the same nationwide coverage as the big providers because Patriot Mobile operates across all three major networks. Plus, they back their service with a coverage guarantee. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team will find the best plan for your needs. Keep your number, keep your phone, or upgrade. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash POSO or call 972-PATRIOT. Right now, you get a free month when you use promo code POSO. Don't get fooled by other providers pretending to share your values or have the same coverage. They don't, and they can't. So join me, make the switch to America's only Christian conservative mobile provider, Patriot Mobile. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash POSO or call 972-PATRIOT for your free month of service today. Yeah, and I've, I've always said that's that's a, you know, they talk about, you know, black pill and the white pill, you know, the black pill is despair, the white pill is hope. The biggest white pill is that when you realize that there is evil, and when you realize that, yeah. wait a minute, this person is acting that way because they're evil or because they're being acted on by right. evil in, in a greater sense of it, not to go like super theological on you, but that if that must be real, then wait a minute, does that mean the other stuff is real? Does that mean the good guys are real? Well, yeah, and I don't, I mean, I'll just say right up front, I don't know any theology. I have almost no interest in learning any. Um, so I don't think it's theological. It's just something that you notice. And what, you know. That's really interesting, by the way. Yeah, well, that I'm just describing my own. I mean, I, I think a lot of people listening probably grew up in a different tradition and like have a grounding to explain this. I don't. I'm just noticing it and trying to make sense of it. And this is the conclusion that I have come to. And I think that we know it's evil because it destroys the people through whom it flows. Right. And it actually has made, made me a lot less judgmental of people who do evil things because I notice that they are destroyed by them. And I'm not saying that from like a judgy, like do a bad thing, get punished point of view at all. I'm just noticing it. And, and the explanations, the secular explanations don't make any sense. It's like, oh, they're in this for the money. You know, they're doing it to get rich or right. powerful. Right. Well, maybe that's what they think. But I've noticed in every single case, people through whom this power flows are themselves destroyed. You know, the trannies are not winning. They're losing. The people who are trying to convince you to castrate your children are seeing their own children castrated. And they themselves are being denied grandchildren, which is like the most basic of all human desires is to see your genes pass on through your line to have grandchildren. And they're being denied that. So they're actually not winning at all. They're being destroyed. And that's the nature of evil. It destroys the person through whom it flows. And I'm not getting this from a theology well, textbook. It used to be a classical, you know, conception it was even in like movies like hollywood movies well i didn't this. even know yeah. that yeah okay so i'm not again i'm an episcopalian we didn't <laughs> learn this all we learned was wear a tie to church and don't applaud okay that was our theology oh yeah and i maybe i went to a particularly shallow church probably but whatever i just have noticed it the one with the cross is ours yeah right they're not getting away with it i mean i look at albert burla you know, someone I consider evil or Tony Fauci, evil. And I see Kamala Harris, clearly evil. All these people are miserable. So miserable. They're not winning. And that makes me feel compassion for them. I'm not going to vote for Kamala Harris, of course. I pray that she doesn't win. Albert Bourla, I think, did something really evil to the world with the vaccine. However, I just have to be honest and say, I don't think they're like, living in peace and joy and splendor on some Caribbean island, like cackling to themselves. I won. They didn't win. They lost in a really profound way. It's on his face. Look at Albert Bourla. Yeah. This is not a man who is like sleeping a sound eight hours. Right. And that mm -hmm. does make you feel compassion for them. And I'm being dead serious. Now, that's a very Christian response, though. I don't know if it I mean, it's, it's a natural once you understand that they're not riding off into the sunset with their ill-gotten loot to enjoy it. They're living in torment. And it's very obvious. Joe Biden, 
one of the reasons I could never hate Joe Biden, though he definitely deserves to be hated, I would say. Um, but I could never really hate him because I always felt bad for him. It's clearly like his whole life is a mess. How are your children doing? Yeah. Which is the key question that any normal person asks himself. How are my kids? And and I I know one of his kids and I knew two of his kids actually. So the whole thing, it's like, it's the saddest thing ever. And that's what evil looks like. It destroys everything it touches, including all of us. Like all of us have had evil flow through us. We've done, well, I'll speak for myself. I've done evil things and it's hurt me. Um. So the more you allow that, the more hurt, you become the more damaged you are. It's like very sad. And then so this can kind of increase at scale. So when you apply it to a country or, or not even that, you apply it to a town, the town gets ruined, a state, the state gets ruined, a country, the country gets ruined. Exactly. Country between country. Exactly. That's war. That's, that's war. Well, that's exactly right. That's its sort of natural end point is just people destroying each other but you see it when you visit countries i've visited a lot of country a lot of country you know many dozens of countries and you know countries that are hurting other people as a matter of policy tend to be a mess and countries that you know and now i sound like a dipshit liberal which i'm certainly not um but you know countries that seek peace or try to facilitate some sort of nonviolent answer are thriving i've seen it in the last year i've seen it and um so, yes, I think we can judge the tree by it, its fruits. Is something good or bad? I don't know. Take a look at it. What do you see? Do you see chaos or order? Right. Do you see filth or cleanliness? Do you see love or hate? Do you see violence or reconciliation? Like, it's kind of that simple. Do you see sobriety or drug addiction? And if you see a lot of bad things, well, they're there for a reason, Right. I mean, this is this is like the first grade theology that I have. To the extent I have theology, it's that. Like it, it right. This this because the the essential extra step that a lot of people don't make is okay. Like we have the misery index now, for example, is kind of what right. we're talking around. And so the question is, what does the misery index serve? Right. People when, when the GDP goes up, you could say, all right, well, this kind of helps the stock market and the bond traders are doing well. They like when the GDP goes up, but it kind of hurts these people over here. So you know, we can focus on that. But then. When the misery index goes up, it's like, well, it doesn't seem to be going down. So is someone benefiting from the misery index going Well, up? I don't even know if someone's benefiting. Someone's doing wrong. Or something. Yeah. Benefiting. I mean, look, when a father gets caught cheating on his wife, his daughter suffers. It screws yes. them up. It screws up their relationships with men. Not always, but often. Very often. Often enough that it's a cliche, but it's it's real. A good father has happier kids. Okay? Right? That's why I feel sorry for Joe Biden. Look at your kids. They're a disaster. Um. So that is a direct reflection of your leadership as their father. And I think it's also true for countries. And, you know, I like I'm, I really care about aesthetics because I care about beauty because I think it's a reflection of God. That's why I love nature. Correct. And healthy countries make beautiful things, beautiful, useful things. And unhealthy countries just make bombs or lend money at interest, you know, or sell the same piece of ground over and over and call it the real estate sector. Like those are not signs those are those are tangible signs of your economy but they're also tangible signs of your moral status if you're not creating beautiful things there's something rotten at the core i i really believe that well, and, and obviously and you mentioned order as well and you require it you know a society to achieve that kind of output requires that order at the lower levels as well to in order to build up to that. Yeah, but it flows down from the top. I mean, I my views on this have completely changed mostly through parenthood, but I think leadership affects- oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, well, you're yeah. in the military, yeah. you know this. I was never in the military, I was never yeah, the Boy I mean, Scouts. It's like, I, yeah, when you're in the military, it's like, you know, you when you've got a bad CEO, you know, and just everything sucks and nothing well, works course. together and nobody, there's just nothing works and nobody cares. That's, that's a big part of it. Nobody cares that it's, you're there, you know, hey, I, I checked in at this time. Hey, I'm checking right. out this time. But you don't care because you're not focused on the mission. You don't care about the mission. You don't know what the mission is, maybe. See, I never understood that. But then we have change of command. And just to finish thought, once we have yeah. change of command and when someone comes in who inspires. Yes. Someone who gives you a clear sense of purpose. Someone who explains the mission to you. Suddenly you feel like you have a part of it. Well, and exactly. suddenly you feel like you want to do something. Exactly. So leadership really matters. In fact, it makes all the difference. And um, I never understood that. I don't know why, because I'm non-hierarchical, I'm anti-authoritarian, -authorita I'm anti-authority, actually, instinctively. I always thought of myself as a libertarian, <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I was an idiot, basically, but I, I missed all of that, and I didn't understand that.
the health of any organization depends upon its leadership. And I was won over to that by watching my own family and having a lot of children and realizing, wow, it's really up to me to be a good leader because that really matters. It's getting the game. For real. Oh, yeah. And what applies to the family in broad terms applies to every human organization because the family is the most basic human organization. And every other organization mimics its basic dynamics. And um, again, these are lessons that I was not taught, but just sort of learned over decades of watching, sort of. And um, anyway, so yes, if you have an evil leadership, you have a dying country. And if you have a decent leadership with all the hallmarks of decency, the first one is humility, always. Um, you know you're not God. That's like the first requirement of leadership. There are limits to your foresight and to your power. Um, leaders who recognize that tend to have thriving countries. Uh, and you really see it. But the making things, like what do you make? Are you making something beautiful? Do you have, like we just, by the way, archaeologists understand this. We not only judge, but we classify entire civilizations based on the objects that they made. The object. I mean, we, you know, we don't know the names ever, of, of the, you know, the indigenous right, right, right. communities who lived in this country 10,000 years ago. We judge them by the kinds of arrowheads and spear points. Have, and, you, have you been to Mount Rushmore? No, never. So I went out there when Trump did the 4th of July deal there yes. a couple of years ago. And I can't remember the data. They had a, little plaque talking about the guy who designed yes. the the mountain. I can't remember the name of the top of it. I think it was Italian immigrant. Um, probably totally wrong. Well, I will fix this well, in post if I am. Most of the great stonemasons were Italian immigrants. They were, of they course. Were. All of our cathedrals were built by Italian and, immigrants. Yeah. But I remember this quote and they asked him, why did you want to do this? Right? Why did you want to do this? And he said, because it is what great societies do. Of course. And they create things of beauty. And he said, and not dollar stores. And 5,000 years from now, when whatever thing is here in this place they will look at this mountain that's right. and know that these were our greatest leaders that's right. and i said that's perfect that's the perfect answer yeah I'm like why don't we know that why so we dying, just destroy, dying societies destroy things that's what they do right um destroy physical things they destroy cultures they destroy other countries they become obsessed with war they make a lot of bombs and nothing else and their leaders celebrate that leaders like nikki haley you know filthy People like Nikki Haley, truly filthy people like Nikki Haley, or the governor of your state, Pennsylvania. Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro, who was photographed today signing an artillery shell. I mean, can't I, wait. I, I do think, though, can I say one obvious thing that like normal people, if they take away all the, you know, the propaganda, they try to just clear their vision a little bit and forget what they've been forced to believe, recognize that as disgusting. Like, that's disgusting. Would you, if he was signing, you know, AR-15 bullets and passing them out to the Crips in LA, you'd be like, that's disgusting. Yeah. That's going to kill somebody. And I, I'm a gun person. I mean, I love, I like guns. But I don't like violence against anybody and particularly not against innocents. And artillery shells kill innocents. Josh Shapiro, you freaking monster. You disgusting human being. It's like, it's why terrifying. isn't he visiting? You know, why, why not? By the way, how could you be the governor of a state with redding in it? I just drove here. Infuriated in the car. You're not far from Philadelphia, by the way. Oh, I'm aware, all. which itself is so shoot, offensive. We had like, like three shootouts last night. But it's a mess. How could you preside over a mess and turn your attention to some country in Eastern Europe? I don't understand that. You're ignoring record, your people. I did not bring up Josh Shapiro first. People know that he and I have a little bit of a history. He brought it up first. Signing artillery shells? To be used against civilians in a war we're not even technically in? He's always been like this. He's disgusting. He's always, he will say or do or cover up anything. He's covered up murders when he was the AG. That but they're violence worshippers. That. That's what we don't say enough. They are care. violence worshippers. Normal people are. I've seen violence actually a lot. And normal people are horrified by it. And we can argue over whether it's justified in some specific case. In my view, it's only justified in self-defense. That's a broad category. We can argue what that means, self-defense. But no person takes joy in violence. No normal person takes so a joy couple, in violence. So a couple of years ago, I had the animal. I had the opportunity to visit my my family's hometown in Poland for the first time. And it was, it was like right before we got married. Um, and it was just gorgeous. It was just I idyllic, you know, village, farms in like southeastern Poland. And I'm like, wow, this place is great. Like, 
why would you know, beautiful cathedral by the way in the middle of town so why would anybody want to leave like why did my why did my ancestors leave this place you know you see some kids going down the dirt road and you think well it could have been me you know and uh like why would you ever want to leave and then 2022 was when ukraine kicked off which is like right down the street and nato took over poland Oh, totally took over. Did they make they it better? Threw out, they rigged the election. Completely threw out yeah. the, the conservative party that was there. Oh, of course. Used, used mail-in voting to do it. Used this weird like half third party thing. And, and now it's like, okay, now I get it. They wanted to get off the merry-go-round of death. Oh, 100%. NATO's taking over Eastern Europe. Romania, same thing. But are they improved? Look, I, you know, every age has an imperial power that, you know, runs everything. I get it. But are they making it better? So Tucker, to, to wrap things up, how do we how do we get off that cycle? I don't know. I mean, tell the truth, no matter what. Like, don't don't bow to evil under any circumstances, no matter what they do to you, period. Like, be a little braver than we're currently being. I don't think it's that hard. I mean, no single person's going to change the world. But collectively, if people just take minor steps, like just be a little braver. Oh, I'm so afraid. Really? What are you afraid of? You're going to die in the end anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. I know exactly. Yeah. That. Look, that's why here in Pennsylvania, this is my home. Plane my feet. 100%. And that's it. Hey, you're born here. Don't leave. I fled California. I felt guilty about it ever since. Might have to do it. Tucker Carlson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.